Hi everyone, it's Jeff Robson, the Director of Access Analytic, where we provide all kinds of amazing solutions in financial modeling, reporting, training, all using Excel and Power BI. Today we're going to have a look at a financial model where we have no copying and pasting of any formulas whatsoever. We're going to be using the new functionality that's available in Excel's dynamic array formulas. Uh, in here we've got a few simple inputs on our setup page. The key one here being the number of periods in our model, and each one of these has been given a range name. Um, down here we've got some stock data types that have been marked using the, uh, the data stocks. Below this we've got a table of some different products that we're selling. Below that we've got a few um, details on different staff who are working for us in this company and their various start and end dates and salaries. We're going to put our model together just using the dynamic arrays. The first one that I've got here is a sequence. So the sequence basically generates a series of numbers, in this case starting at the number 1 and incrementing by 1, going out to 60 periods. Alright, so that sort of gives me a framework of which I can build my entire model. So below that I can use that to generate my dates in my model. So I've used the date function. Curiously the, the date function seems to spill whereas the end of month function doesn't seem to spill for some reason. So I've used a date function to create a series of dates going across the page using the period numbers to add uh, X number of months onto my original starting date. And because I've put G6 and the hash after it, that allows me to spill this function all the way across. So what I end up getting is an entire series of end of month dates going all the way across my page. All right, so based on that, the year function, very simple, just pulls in the year. Same for the calendar month. My financial year, we in Australia we have a 30 June year end down, down here, a financial month. So um, just basically converting my calendar month into a financial month. And then I've, lastly I've got a, a model year. So I'll use this later on in some of my calculations. And then lastly I've got a, uh, a sequence which generates a whole series of ones just going across the page. And this allows me to spill some functions out to the right. So what I've got here is I've got a sort by just based on a column of the table. I've got an FX rate, which I've used the XLOOKUP function, another new function, but it allows me to say XLOOKUP based on this cell and then spilled to take each of those values in turn, look them up in the FX rates column of my table and pull back the, uh, the corresponding rate from that table. And I did the same with my monthly change. All right, so once we've done that, I've got a formula here and this seems a bit strange when you look at it at first. This formula says take D16, which is my cell over here, spilled, so this is spilling down, add on G6, which is my period number, times by uh, E16 spilled down. So G6 spills across, D16 and E16 both spilled down. But I can write one single formula in this way and it knows how to deal with it because these are dynamic arrays. When you are looking at this, make sure you've got the Insider Edition of Excel installed. It's not available. These dynamic arrays are currently, as of October 2019, they're currently not available for the general user in uh, the most versions of Excel. So you will need to have the Insider Edition. So what I've got here, again, just linking to a column in a table, linking to a column in a table, and because they're dynamic arrays now, they automatically spill down. Over here, I've got a, a function which basically allows me to calculate my number of sales units by taking my uh, annual increase and raising that to the power of my year number minus one. So it just gives me a way of creating a formula which again will spill down and across. Uh, the unit price works pretty much exactly the same way. My exchange rates, I actually ended up using an index here. So this is a, again a bit of a perhaps a strange way of writing an index. We're saying match C43 spilled down in C16, uh, which is back up here. It's also spilled down and we're indexing G16 spilled. So what's G16? Well G16 was our entire array of all of our exchange rates. Alright, so when I come down here, this one kind of works much the same way. 
It's a pretty straightforward formula. Uh, when I got to my total, now you'd think there would be a simple way of me adding up a column of numbers. For the life of me, I could not find a simple way of doing it, and the only way I ended up finding was this mmult function, which is, I've never ever used this before in my life, but this was multiplying two arrays together. If you want more information, um, Google Mamalt. It's a pretty weird way of adding up a column of numbers, but trust me, it does actually work. If anyone's got a better way, I'm more than happy to hear from you. Uh, I'm hoping there will at least be a better way at some point, but right now this was the only function I could find to add up a series of values which would also spill all the way across to the right hand side. Most of the other functions in here are kind of re repetitions of some of the formulas that we've got above, so I won't go through all of those. When you get down to gross profit, the function down here is actually quite a simple one. One cell minus the other. And because these are spilled, they go all the way across to the right hand side again. What was curious here was I've got people that are starting and ending at particular times, and I wanted to multiply out what their salaries were. All right. Pretty simple sort of stuff, or relatively simple anyway. I just look at the dates and see, you know, does the date in this column fall between the start and the end date? If so, take the salary, divide by 12. In our simple financial model here, we have no salary increases. Obviously, in real life, um, perhaps you may give people a salary rise occasionally. But um, in this model, we have no salary pay rises. What I ended up doing was, if I just take this out here, um, normally I would use an AND function here to test whether the, um, the date in the column is between the start and the end date. However, AND function, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to spill across. So what I ended up doing was essentially replicating the logic of the AND function just with two uh, logical tests here. So one multiplied by the other. Again, just each of these will result in a, a one or a zero, a true or a false essentially. And when you multiply them together, if they're both true, you'll get one. If either one of them is zero or both are zero, obviously you get zero. So this gives me a whole series of ones and zeros going across the page. When I multiply this out and add my salary on the end of it, divide by 12, I now have the salary and I can see people starting and ending in the right place. All right, another mamult function to add all of that up. Uh, it gives me my total salaries and wages. I've got an overheads, total overheads, just again, just adding those two together and a final um, EBITDA. All right, all quite cool. Um, when I get to the very bottom here, what I have in here is a function which looks a little strange again because what I'm saying is if G6, which is my period number, equals the max of G6. It looks weird because it looks like you're comparing the cell to itself. But what I'm in fact saying is if the value in uh, G6 in this column is equal to the max of G6 spilled, which is the entire range. So I know it looks a little strange, but this gives me a way where I can place a value in the very end of my financial model. So in my case, I'm just using this to simulate a, a salvage value or a terminal value or something like that. When I add all of those up, there's my cash flows to discount, and I used an XNPV, again with a couple of cell references spilled, to calculate what was my actual NPV. Coming down here, we might want to do some reporting and summarize this information together. Obviously, normally this would be on a separate sheet. In my case, I've just put it on the same sheet so we can see what's happening. But what I did was I generated a sequence of years based on my, on my um, model term divided by 12 and using the starting year that I had in my model. Then all I do is a series of simple sum ifs um, to add up all of the relevant years and the relevant amounts. And then lastly, I have a little kind of simulation of a, a table down here, like a what if scenarios type table. Again, just a, a sequence with some hard coded numbers yeah, just for illustration purposes, don't crucify me for the hard code numbers. And up here, just again, another sequence. So that gives me a series of percentages going across and a series of uh, investment amounts going down. And in between, again, you guessed it, yes, yet another array function. Curiously, the XNPV didn't seem to spill, but the NPV function does. So a few kind of quirks and uh, things to look out for. But, uh, this is a way that I can get a scenarios table, which is essentially live. 
This is not going to replace your data tables, but yes. it does give you a way of calculating this live. All right, so there's a financial model all being generated by simply entering formulas without one single copy and paste. Now, the cool thing about this, the very, very cool thing about this is that I can go back to my model and I can simply change the number of periods in my model. Let's say I go from 60 to maybe 72. When I do that, my financial model over here has now copied every single formula across to month number 72. So I've just added another year onto my model without having to copy and paste a single formula. There's all of my additional formulas all copied across beautifully. There's that extra uh, value in the last cell, uh, last period. And I can see down here that I now have six periods in my report as well. All right, pretty cool, <laughs> but wait, there's more. What about if we wanted to add in uh, another product, let's say? Well, that's also pretty simple. So I'll insert an, an extra row in here so I've got a bit of space. So let's add in a new product, uh, the Chris Clifton's Notepaper. The great thing about this is when I come back to my model, I see this new product has been added at every single location where it was relevant in my financial model. So obviously if I added like 10 new products, I'd need to have some additional rows in here. It would give me an error if I added too many and I didn't have space and all that kind of stuff, but a little bit of formatting that's required, but like I haven't had to copy any formulas whatsoever. So that's amazingly cool stuff I think. Thank you very much for watching. I encourage you if you would like to have a look at this model, download it for yourself, have a bit of a play. You can make changes to it, you can you know knock yourself out. But um, yeah take a look and I think you'll agree it is pretty cool. You can add more staff, you can remove products, take people out, add people in, all kinds of cool things. Dynamic array functions, they are absolutely amazing. Thank you very much guys.